How you doing, fellas? Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple valve uh, adjustment, or I'm going to check the valves in my uh, DRZ. Um, this is something that if you own a DRZ, you're going to have to, at one point, probably check or make adjustments to your valve clearances. So... With that said, uh, first thing that you want to do is get the bike uh, up. What you do want to do is you want to be able or you want to take off all the guards, all the gas tank. I'm not going to go through any of that. You've got three bolts that are actually going to be, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's three bolts, uh, a breather. You want to remove the um, spark plug. Uh, you don't actually have to remove the spark plug, but I probably would. There's an also another little vent. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's another little vent right there. So that also has to come off. You remove the gas tank. I do have the carburetor off. However, you don't need to remove the carburetor or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I just went ahead and I clean, uh, cleaned up my carburetor. Uh, if you're having a hard uh, hard starts, if your DRZ is backfiring, anything like that, it's probably a good indication that you got to check out the, uh, the valves and check your clearances. Okay, remove all the shrouds, the seat. Uh, again, you don't have to do the airbox, you don't have to do the carburetor, uh, but you do want to take off the, the rest of it. Other things that are going to impede you a little bit is going to be the fan. So there's the fan. Uh, on the other side is going to be the horn. So I've already went ahead and I've removed those. I've removed the bolts. I've removed the spark plug. Um, the next two is going to be your uh, timing mark up here and this cover here. Now. Uh, I've already done this, but you you should go ahead and you, and you should wipe off any uh, of the excess oil. Uh, with that, you, what you want to do is you want to get the timing mark. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you want this thing at top dead, top dead center, uh, in order for you to check the valve clearances. Okay, so with that said, we want to go ahead and we want to go to the bench. And what you're going to need is some some feeler gauges. Okay, so one of the things that I recommend is getting yourself a decent pair of um, metric. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but that is the spec. So uh, what the valves are supposed to be on the intake side is 10 to uh, point, point 0.10 uh, millimeters to point 0.02 millimeters on the uh, intake. And on the exhaust side, you're looking at point 0.20 to 0 0.30 uh, millimeters uh, is within clearance or spec on the exhaust side. So um, I've already went ahead and I've taken my measurement, but just in case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it again, okay? Just so that we can get uh, a good indication on, on what it is. These these bikes do come uh, with a, uh, it's a Shimon bucket system or, or however you guys wanna, wanna uh, say it, but uh, there is a shim. One of the other things, if you plan on doing this yourself, you will need um, a shim kit. A good idea also is going to be a, uh, a caliper, a vernier caliper or a digital uh, caliper. Something that you can actually measure just in case the, um, the numbers on the shim that you are taking out wear off. You're going to need those, those numbers. With that said, one of the things that I like to do is I like to go somewhere in between these. Okay, I don't like to go to one extreme to the other. Okay, and that goes on on both. So right now, what I, I I've written this down as actual. Okay, on the intake. Okay, actual on the exhaust. I've marked out where the chain is. Okay, I have two lobes on on each. Okay, so that's what you're going to be running up against. Okay, lobe one, lobe two, chain. Lobe one, lobe two, chain. Okay, so I got a 12, I got a 0 .09, okay, on lobe two, which is actually below uh, spec. Okay, I've got 21, which is great, and again, on lobe two, so lobe two seems to be um, 0 .01 below tolerance or spec or whatever you guys wanna, wanna say. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna redo these just so that you guys can see. So coming along over to the bike, what you want to do is you want to remove all of this, the gas tank, the shrouds, the uh, the fan, uh, the horn, and what it'll do is it'll allow you to have very good and easy access in. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, what you want to do is you want to stick the cover somewhere where it's not going to get any dust or uh, get any of that kind of stuff, uh, contaminants. 
okay? So while you're doing this, what you wanna do is you wanna check and make sure that everything looks good, okay? That you don't have any foreign pieces or objects that shouldn't be in there, uh, in there. Okay, so this is already, I, I've already looked. Okay, everything is actually marked. So actually the intake, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it actually does say intake and it actually does say exhaust. Okay, so these are a couple of the little things that that are gonna be on there. Now, if I go around to the other side, this is going to be the other part that you're gonna want to make sure. Okay, so you have different marks and this one here, um, so I have a, I have an arrow pointing up. Okay, so there's some markings on, on this that you're gonna want to um, take, uh, take, a, take a good look at. We're not there yet because we actually don't know whether or not we, uh, or I know, but you will not know if you have to take these apart. For all you know, it could be in spec and your hard start or your backfiring could be caused because of your carburetor. So uh, it could be something other than a valve adjustment, but this is something that even the service manual says to check. Okay, so um, you do want to check these. The other thing that you're going to have to get into if you do have to make adjustments is going to be your cam chain, uh, cam chain tensioner. Okay, um, but we're not there yet. Yeah. So let's go back around to the other side. Okay, and as as you can see, I'm I am at uh, top dead center. Okay, and that is pretty clear on on my lobes. That's about where they're supposed to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and. We're gonna do the uh, the intake, and I think I'm just gonna take a a measurement of 12. So if I take the eight and the four, okay, that gives me 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check my actual intake lobe one on the intake side. So this should be exactly what I'm what I'm looking at. So again, intake lobe one okay and i did this differently so hopefully i get the same uh, same result okay so it goes in there okay so yeah this is a, a, about a this is about a 12 I, I i think that i tried a uh, a 13 and it, it just will not go in so that's a that's a 12 on there now then Use it both hands on that, fellas. Okay, and it doesn't need to come right out; just needs to be loosened. Then what we want to do is we want to get get the two uh, Allens and remove the tension off of the cam chain. So, with that, let me go ahead and get these out. you're grabbing it from this side now I'll go around to the other side and take the other one out It, it's loose. I've already went ahead and I've taken a picture of this as well. Now the next step that we want to do is actually go ahead and loosen these off. And what you want to do is you want to get at them in a uh, crisscross crisscross pattern. And what you want to do is just loosen them and go about it in a crisscross pattern. Okay, and once they've been been loosened, 
then you can go ahead and uh, okay now they should all be they should all be loose okay so now that we've got all the the, the, the caps loose what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna work on the intake first and I'm gonna remove the bolts off of the intake making sure that this stays all together in one piece and you'll see exactly what I mean here in a second I'm just bringing the the bolts up and I'm gonna do the same to the other side but I'm gonna get this one I don't know if you guys can see that but the one that's holding the uh, the top piece here so that I can remove this and we'll go ahead and, and work on the intake side first. So I know that this one here had a little bit left. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bolt and we'll put this off to the side. What we don't want is we don't wanna lose the screws on where they exactly they go. Okay, so now that your cam is very, very loose, what you, uh, what I like to do is I like to tie it off, okay? Some people put a screwdriver through, um, you know, it, it, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and let me uh, just uh, tighten that uh, chain up. Now you can go ahead and you can remove your cap. Just it's super hard to do with one hand. I'm gonna use both hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove this and hopefully you guys can see. Okay, so there's there's a dowel, um, and it appears that there may be a dowel on both of both of the back sides. So um, just be be careful. I mean, if you have a a nylon tool, you can go ahead and and use the uh, the nylon tube. Work that work that out, just like so. So when you have it. Try to pull it out. Okay. And what you really want to do is you want to be careful not to lose uh, anything in there. Take a quick look at, at your orientation. Okay, take a picture of it, take a video, just so that you have something to reference. Okay, and there's the dowel. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove uh, the intake cam. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that on my intake side. This is the part that we've been waiting for. One of the things that, uh, that I find really well is getting a good little magnet and of course they don't want to okay and just be very careful now it looks like i have the shim okay so this is the uh the intake furthest away from the chain so it will go here And the one that's closest to the chain is right there. I'm gonna use a different magnet. And that one as well. So this one here is going towards the, the chain. There's the shim. So we wanna go ahead and we wanna put the shim next to it. Here's the shim. And we wanna go next to it. So this here is a 2.82 by the looks of it. So this one here is a 282. Okay, fellas. Here we go, some simple math. 0 0.09 from 0 0.10 is 0 0.01. So technically I only have to bring this down to 2.81.
Next closest one in my shims, uh, shim kit, uh, since they are in uh, increments of uh, point, uh, point 0.5 or point zero 0.05, uh, it's gonna be a 280. Next one down from that is gonna be a 275. So these are the ones that I'm gonna have to take a, uh, take a look at. I'll probably start off and check this one and then move to this one, uh, double check, make sure that I am within my allowed tolerance and that will determine whether I am actually gonna go down another 0 0.05. Okay, same thing as on the exhaust. 0.19 to 0 0.20 is 0 0.01. Okay, so that would be a 3.11. Okay, my shim kit again is in increments of five, so that'd be a 3.10. One down from that would be a, um, a 3.05. Uh, I'm probably just gonna go straight into to this one and I'm probably gonna test this because as I said before in the past, I wanna be somewhere in the middle um, they close over time so that's what I'm after I um, hope that helps okay and you just want to check whatever whatever you can and go at it uh, that way now, I don't know if you guys can see that or not but it's actually not seated properly and you want to make sure that we get a good seat that's properly seated then we can go ahead and throw the shim back down Okay, the other one we said that it was in spec, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reinstall the one that I had in there. Just like so. We're going back to the cam and Camp should be somewhere around there. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and put the, uh, tighten this back down with the cap. Okay, so give me a minute. Let me get that cap back on. So at this point, I've went ahead and I put the cap back on minus the guard, okay? Cause I, I, I'm still, if it's not right, I'm gonna have to take it back off. If it is right, I still have to take the exhaust off, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around to the other side. I'm gonna make, try to make sure that my cam is in the same spot as when I started. <laughs> and it should be fairly easy. Okay, so that's about where, where it is. All right, and there you go, fellas. Once you've got this back into its uh, origin, I can't stress enough, take some pictures uh, so that you know exactly where this is um, gonna end up. Okay, you can go ahead and you can put your, your cam chain tensioner back in, okay? Um, and that's the finished product. You can go ahead and you can put the the, the cover back on, button it all up, and you should be good to, good to go. Thanks for watching.